Hello everyone, and welcome back to another unboxing. I mentioned this one in my previous video, the HP 77, if you do recall. This is a human model P1101. I've been waiting to get one of these for quite a long time, probably since last December. The thing was, this plane was an experimental German jet. It was built in Messerschmitt's station in Oberemmergau, near the edge of Austria. And whilst they had built it, unfortunately, they had left it outside to rot eventually. And the Americans eventually took it back and uh, took the design and changed it into the Bell X-5 for the variable swept wings, which apparently this aircraft did have. I actually want to make a diorama of it sitting outside, sort of rotting away. There are quite a few photos you can find of it outside. And, well, I've got a lot of work to do. So, first up, you have the instruction booklet in front. This is Humor's earlier 1980s release. You don't know what year, but I assume 87, let's say. But don't take that one for, you know, take it with a pinch of salt, that answer. So it basically comes in this uh, poly bag, comes with the instruction booklet in front, and then you can see the parts, the decals, and the clear parts. This bag was better sealed. I was going to open it before I decided I will open it fresh. I don't often do that on the channel. I often open them and then show. I show what I've already unboxed, but just not on camera. Just because, yeah, you know, I'm really excited to uh, see it, do dry fit and stuff. But sometimes when I want to make these videos, I really I have to be really hesitant on whether I do it or not. So. So what do we get? We get a small clip up, just one bit. He has the decals, often they are quite thick, I'm not sure about this time. You probably have to use a lot of setting solution. And then we have the one sprue of parts with alternate tails, which is quite odd since Humor actually never used this tail part. We'll cover all of that in a minute, but for now, we'll put that aside as well as everything else and quickly we'll look at the booklet it's actually quite thick like a um like a proper laminated photo printing paper almost that's how i would describe it it's actually quite interesting they give they give a what if scheme, which I didn't know they did. But we'll come back to this later. I've not actually seen the instructions yet, but it will be quite interesting to look at. Right here, we have pieces. I will zoom in. I will do the zoom in. Oh. So we have some landing gear and part of the gear base. So you can either have the engine exposed or closed because in fact the original prototype had never had it covered over. The original engine it wanted to use was never put into full production and the factories were invaded very soon, uh, well quite close to the time in which the Messerschmitt factory was also invaded. The open engine is, hmm, it's all right. I would say it's the best open engine ever, but it is quite nice that they even provide this option. But that's what you have to sort of do if you want the accurate model. So you have the two tails. We have the one if you want to do the high V tail, which is here. And that one comes with the different pins. Or you have this one. This tail, this tail is for the normal one, but it doesn't look like it's the right tail like it doesn't look accurate we'll have to look into that in a minute because i'm trying to think about how i'm going to replicate this for the diorama 
we have the normal low tailplanes. We have the wheels and what seems to be this sort of pin up here, which looks like it'll also be part of the engine. We have, I think there's a yoke. I wasn't sure what it was at first. We have the different tail cones, I've got to mention. So we have these ones for the normal, the normal tailplanes. We have this one if you're doing the high V-tail. We have these struts, which are basically to hold hold the the fuselage up internally. These are shown when the engine is exposed. Oh wait, no, that might be the yoke. Oh, I'm not sure what that other bit is. Have a look at the instructions. I'll zoom a bit out. Well, actually no, if it's on camera. So we have the main fuselage parts. And then over here you have the covers for the engines. But if you're doing the prototype version instead of the what if version, you will want these off. As the actual prototype never seemed to have had them on. Over on the other side, very similar. And if you can't see, but I think you can, those panel lines are really odd, like vac form levels of bad. So you might want to fill those in, rescribe them. But in fact, as Harry Houdini models pointed out, planes don't often have panel lines. So in fact, most of those people who are really worried about the panel lines, just remember that in fact, you technically are making them quite inaccurate. It's just a stylistic thing I understand, but you know, that that's not really an accurate, realistic thing to depict on your plane. So we have this landing gear bit, which I'm going to have to modify since the, when it was abandoned, the wheel was missing. We have another strut internally, and this is for the air intake, I believe, in front. We have a control panel. We have the floor piece, a chair, and a pilot. I totally forget the humor kits include a pilot. I built their triflugal, but I want to keep building Humor's Le 46 kits. Really charming, really rare. Um, well, I mean, they're rare because they pop up. They don't pop up very often in the UK, at least. And when they do, they're about £60 with a £5 postage. Like, I'm going to want to pay, what, another £5 on top of £60. Internally, there's not really too many parts to hold it, uh, to hold up the, the any bulkheads or anything. So no locator pins, but that's fine. I think if you're even, you know, if you've done any old kit or any kit that isn't airfix or revel, you probably can do without locator pins. It's not the end of the world, unless it's the wing, or the tail mostly. So, wow, loads of ejector pins, absolutely massive. I mean, it's not too bad, really. Um, well, it's bad in detail, but at least they're providing bits instead of asking you to make them like a vac form or something else like just a really bad kit i just i think it's nice quite charming but i'm never really that harsh on model kits so sometimes i try and speak from both perspectives both mine and what a general modeler might think so if I do say, oh, it doesn't look the best, and then I actually say it doesn't look too bad, it's mainly because I'm trying to say from two different angles. So we have this bulkhead where the engine will go, and I don't know where this goes. We'll have to look at the instructions, and then there are the wheels. I can't remember if I mentioned those, and there are some pedals, and part of the air intake, I believe, again. We have these decals, we have the MEP1101 V1 decals, which are the ones I'll need to use for the abandoned one, as that's what they used. 
we have these six black crosses but actually the iron crosses were never actually black on the real prototype well on the abandoned one they were actually white on top and that was the only ones they had the actual abandoned one had six panels missing from each wing both in the exact same spots but unfortunately i just realized that there's not a top and a bottom wing half so in fact i'm not sure how i'm going to replicate that we have this version which is for the earlier prototype showing where the sixth armament would be placed in the nose and then we have oh yeah the swastikas um, well, I'm not sure if that I'm supposed to show it on YouTube, but, but I, I'm not doing it for money, so. The canopy is actually quite nice. You can see those, um, those lines on it. And you just have this stub, as you can see, it just falls off. I like that. It's a shame I'm not actually going to be able to use it since the abandoned one was missing its canopy at that stage. The last thing we have, if I zoom out, because uh, we got to cover the instruction booklet. Let me just focus the camera. So I have all this information. I'll try and flatten it out. You can just about to see it all but it's all in german i did forget to mention these kits were produced in germany if you can guess already and so they're not often sold in the uk so we have this diagram that's quite cool that actually is quite helpful since i'm probably gonna why well, wonder 170 second scale diagram to plan out the colors and things that is really helpful for what I'm going to do. And starting from the top, this, this instruction booklet is big. So I probably can't fit it all in, so I'm sorry about that. We have the MEP1101, which is really, this is inaccurate, sort of. Because they don't show the panels being missing. But one of the main things is that... The early MEP 1101 V1 decals. Uh, earlier, it was painted silver, just like this one. But then they did change it later and paint on a smooth camouflage just on the top of the wings. Well, at least that's what it looks like they did. So, we also have these Luft 46 schemes, which show a splinter camouflage. I'm guessing light grey and yeah, light grey, dark grey. Well, let me zoom in. So we have a big exploded diagram. I didn't know they did that. As you can see, that's the sort of engine setup. The cockpit's really basic. I mean, it's not too bad. They show you the different variety of tail bits, but I can assume that these instructions could be confusing to most people. They show some landing gear bits. They show the engine being fully assembled as well. And that seems to be it. I'm not sure about weight in the nose. The prototypes never actually had enough weight in the nose, in fact, funnily enough. And so, if I, if I show you this photo, they're having to prop it up. So, I'm not sure how much weight, but it, actually, if you want an accurate kit, you wouldn't actually put any in. That's just a sprue map. Really nice to have. Just check if they're missing. Because with my triflugal, the canopy had fallen out, I don't know, in transit or something, but it was missing. So I ended up having to use an old ME262 canopy and sort of modify it from there. We have some instructions, which I think they're partially in English. Yeah, they are. 
So they tell you what those circles on the instructions mean. And they give you an Heinkel HES011 engine, which is what they used in the earlier versions. And they basically just give you that so you can roughly work out how to paint it. So, what do I think? I personally think that it looks like, it looks like fun, you know? It doesn't look like the best kit. Um, uh, as of me making this, only about a few days ago, RS models showed off their new 1 to 48 Luft 46 version. And the only other version in 1 to 72nd plastic, I believe, is, which has been reboxed by Ravel, is by Dragon, but it represents the high V tail. But it does have better engine detail, better cockpit detail, but it's not representing the prototype. I'm not sure if you would really want to buy both and then combine them, because that's just expensive, a bit excessive. What I would recommend is, if you want a Lift 46 version, get the Dragon slash Revival version. And if you want the prototype version, get this one. And there is a resin 1 to 30 second scale kit, which would be cool to make a massive version of that diorama. I'll probably do regular updates on the diorama. I always say I'm going to make videos on these projects, but even the XP77 I never end up making any videos on. So, yeah, whatever happens... You either see it or you don't. That was the unboxing of the P1101. So I'll see you in the next video, which could quite possibly be in the next week or two. So I'll see you then.